Good morning, everyone. Welcome to this study this week. We're going to be going over some of the stuff from last week, which can be rather complicated. So before we begin, can you join me in a word of prayer? And dear Father in heaven, we are so grateful, Lord, for the time that we have this morning uh, to open your word and to see things that we have never seen before, to be corrected when we are in error. And uh, we pray for Heidi, that you can, your healing hand can be upon her, that she can feel better. And we pray for others, Lord, who are struggling. And we pray for Hung and his family in Vietnam. We're soon to have a baby. And uh, we just ask, Lord, that you can help each of us to obey your voice and to follow and serve you. As we look at these messages, we ask, Lord, that we can understand them and understand how to present them simply to others. Thank you for hearing our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> okay, so just a quick review of what happened last week. Uh, so the first thing was we had this line of Jephthah. So the line of Jephthah, we had started at June 22nd, 2014. And um, in, in creating this line, and, and I think this line is just fine, um, what we had focused upon was the six years of Jephthah. And this, this line is a zoom into the line of the judges where we have December 6th, 2020, as uh, the empowerment of the first message. I think it is. Um, let me see, I have to look at one of these charts. Uh, pardon me, the formalization of the first message. And so in, in zooming into this line, we, we looked at what these six years were and this was this period of time in which the message of Jephthah um, was basically rejected. So this is a line of rejection of a message. So all along this way, this message is coming, and it's being rejected and ultimately rejected on December 26, or December 6, 2020. So we still think this is a valid line. Um, so this, this could be the line of Jephthah. There's nothing wrong with this line at all. Now, we know that there's this period of oppression, which is 18 years. Now, if we took this 18 years um, and we applied it, um, and I'm trying to see what we have here. So, so it says from 9-11 uh, to 11-9, is 18 years. Well, it's not, right? Um, uh, let me see. Or is it? Yes, th it is. So that's going to be 18 years from 9-11 to 11-9. And if we take 33, 16 days from March 7th, 2021, it brings us to April 5th, 2030. So, so we could get to April 5th, 2030 by taking the Hebrew number in Strong's Concordance for the name of Jephthah. And we can see that if we count from March 7th, March 7th is in 2021, is when we're going to begin examining the lines. And it will bring us to April 5th, 2030. So that's 3,316 days, right? So, so that seems significant that we can, we can do that. But we started looking at this um, this number, and I think it was on Thursday, or it could have been on Wednesday. Um, maybe it's Wednesday. Um, but I noticed that this number had some characteristics. That is, if I doubled it, it would produce 18 years. That is, the number itself is nine years and one month. Right. So it's not quite 10 years. You can see if it was 10 years, it'd be, um, you know, 3,650, you know, two days or whatever. 
but it's 3,316. So it's, it's like 11 months short of 10 years. Um, so then what I did is I just counted back from 9-11, 2019, and I came up with this date, October 10th, 2010. Now that's the first day of the seventh month. And then what I'm doing is I'm counting from the end of that day to the beginning of November 9th, 2019. So if I counted from the beginning of that day, it'd be 3,317 days. But I'm counting to the end of that day. And that day is the first day of the seventh month. It's Rosh Hashanah. <clears throat> and then um, we, we can count another 3,316 days, and it brings us back to September 11th, so right to the day. So if we count from September 11th, and, and I drew this out in another way just to make it clear, that is, we zoom in here, you can see here is this 18 years, September 11th, 2001 to November 9th, 2019. I'm counting, and I put these arrows here to show that I'm counting from the beginning of that day back to the beginning of 9-11. And then I'm going to count from the end of that day to the beginning of November 9th. So that's going to be 18 years, technically 18 years and two months. If you go from September 11th, right, you can see that it's the ninth month. And, and you know, it's, obviously it's going to be the ninth day, but depends you know where you you're starting in, in a year and how it's going to work out now the the interesting thing that i found after the study on thursday is we had been looking at shibboleth now shibboleth uh, the interesting thing about this word um, is that it shows up in judges 12 verse 6 and we had placed this then at december uh, December 6th. So December 6, 2020, that's actually 12.6. And so we're taking 12.6, the shibboleth, and we're placing it there. Now it's the Hebrew number 7641. So if you take 7641 and you subtract 1467, this is called uh, Krepikers, uh, Capricars, Capricars operation. That is, it's based on Capricars constant. That is, you can take any four-digit numbers as long as they're not all the same digit. And if you order them from highest to lowest and from lowest to highest, you will eventually get um, 6174. So that's the constant. Now, the shortest step is if you have 7641, because that is, once you get those four digits, um, the next step is to order them from highest to lowest and lowest to highest to make the subtraction. So then you get 6174 Capricorn's constant. So I could put here KC, Capricorn's constant, right? Um, and uh, Theodore, I hate um, doing this, but can you explain that one more time? Seven, so you got. Three sevens and three sixes, and that's Capricorn. Okay, so that there, I didn't explain this part yet. Okay. This number, 6174. So this is a constant. That is, if you take any four-digit numbers and you go through these operations. And so I'll just show you as an example. So... So we're just going to take any random four numbers. So if I had these numbers, if I wanted to find Capricar's constant, I would order these numbers from highest to lowest and lowest to highest. So I just typed in 6874. It doesn't mean anything, but I'm going to go 8764. Minus 4. Six, seven, eight. And I'll get this number, right? And then I do it again. So I'm going to go eight, six, uh, four, zero. And I'm going to subtract 
um, 468. Right, I don't need to put the zero in there. And I get these numbers, 8172. All right. So I have to order these in order. 8712 minus 1278. No, you would uh, eight seven two one. Oh, pardon me. Yeah, eight seven two one minus one two seven eight. Thanks for correcting me there. So I get this number, and it, and this number is already in order. So I only have to subtract three four four seven, and then I get this number. So this one has to be nine nine six three. Minus three six nine nine. Then I get six two six four. So I subtract. Uh, so I have to get clear. Six six four two minus two four six six. Now you see at this step, I have these four digits, and these are the four digits that are an iteration of. Capricar's constant. So now I take these four digits, seven, six, four, one, that's the number for Jephtha. And then I subtract one, four, six, seven, and I get this number, uh, six, six, one, seven, four, which is Capricar's constant. Now, it will never be more than seven steps, seven operations to get this number. Now, the shortest step, of course, is to have the numbers. That is, you'll always get to the four digits, 7641, in some order. And then the next step will be that you get Capricar's constant. So with the name of Jephtha, it already has those four digits in the correct order from highest to lowest. All you have to do is subtract the inversion of that, and you will get Capricar's constant. So it's basically one step. It's not, it's, it, you know, if we had the other one, we had them out of order, then, then that would be an extra step, right? So this is basically the shortest step you can have other than to have them already in order. So if I took like uh, 1062 and I yep. put them in order, Yep, so 1062, you would go 6210 minus 0216, so you don't need the zero there, right? You'll get these numbers, right? right. And, then, and then again, you would order these numbers. It would be, uh, it would be 126. 126, yes, pardon me. Yeah, 126, there we go. You get these numbers, right? And then you would put these in order. 8640 minus 468, right? Here you get these, and you'll see actually one of the steps that you often get is you'll get these four numbers in this order. I've noticed when I've done this, that is you, I, I don't know if I get it every time, I haven't paid attention. But these four numbers we recognize as July 18, 2020 numbers, right? It has that 126 in it, too. Dude. Yeah. Yeah, I know. So so there's something interesting about this Capricar's constant that, um, so anyway, we're going to go 8712, because we already did this in the previous calculation. 8721. Yeah, and again, I do it backwards. 8721. So I did the same mistake last time, minus one, two, seven, eight. And then I get this number, which we got before. So the thing is, it will break down to the point where you always get the same four digits, right? Oh, okay. Right? So that's that's what Capricar's constant is. It's this weird thing in math. Now, the point is, um, Jephthah's name has this symbol in it, right? So we had only, you know, recently discovered Capricar's constant. I can't remember for what reason, um, whether it was, um, I can't remember when we discovered it. It's recently, anyway, within the last couple of weeks, if I remember correctly. 
Um, but anyway, so we have this name of Jephthah. And so what I did is I drew this out. Now, if we take the number of Jephthah and the number for Shibboleth and we add them together, we get 10,957. So if we count those as days, that's exactly the number of days from November 9th, 1989 to November 9th, 2019. That is, it's simply 30 years, right? That is, from September 11th to November 9th, 2019 is 18 years and two months. And that means this period of time here from November 9th, 1989 to September 11th is um, 12 years less two months, right? So it's 12 years and 18 years. And we've noted this before dealing with Christ. Christ is 30 years old when he's baptized, right? And we know that he comes to the temple when he's 12. So we can take this symbol here, Christ's youth until he's 12. And then these from when he's 12 to when he's baptized. So we've already noted this. Jeff has noted it in studies in the past. Um, so to me, this is, is fairly remarkable. Now this, um, so this is all together, these two, but you can see then um, this to this is gonna be uh, 7,640. When I'm counting this here, I'm not counting this this day, right? So when you count to the end, when you count this whole period of time, it ends up being 7,641 days. So I showed this here on the bottom, and I can show that this number Capricar is constant is seven times seven times seven times 18, six plus six plus six. And so this is a period of seven, six, four, one inclusive days, that is, we're counting to the end of the 10th day of the 10th month, right? Where this 316 is counting from the beginning of the 10th day of the 10th month of the 10th year. <clears throat> so there's lots of little details in here about these different dates. Um, so this is kind of putting a bunch of different things together. Right now, the focus is upon the shibboleth and, uh, and, um, the story of Jephthah. So some interesting things that we can note here. So the first thing is this period of 10,957 days. Now, obviously it's 30 years um, to the day. Now, it is a prime number. That is, it's the 1,331st prime number. Right, so this uh, 1331, we've seen with the mind calendar that begins in 3113 BC, so an inversion of that. And, and one of the things about Capricar's constant is that it's, it's telling us that an iteration of a number that is the same four digits or three digits or whatever in a different order, um, which we've been doing for a long time, is a significant symbol. That is, just because the numbers aren't in order doesn't mean they're not significant. Now, we always have to have two or three witnesses, or sometimes we have multiple witnesses for, for these numbers, for the structures that occur. And so the interesting thing about what we did with the name of Jephthah is we had counted these number of days, which I still have to put in here, um, somewhere but we have to go back to like march 7th i got to put a line in here showing that it's 31 13 days to uh 3316 days to april 5th 2030 from when we started the the study of examining the foundation so that was our first major series of studies where we started to look back at our history now the thing about this line line and, and all the lines of judges is they really give us a broad scope of our history, but of different aspects of that history. And, and with this line, because this is a zoom into the formalization, 
in the line of the judges, December 6, 2020, which is a rejection of um, this, this symbolic use of numbers. Uh, this line of Jephthah has by far uh, been the strongest witness to the symbolic use of numbers and dates, right? So it's in these spans of time. Now, also, we have this thing of using a Hebrew number for, you know, a word and finding significance in it. Now, we had done this in the past, right? So this isn't unique to our personal studies. Adilio used it when he was um, looking at some of his his information. I can't remember particularly. That. I, th I know he looked at uh, verses, and I think he looked at uh, the number 1629. Uh, 1629 in his uh, uh, presentations. Can't remember what that one was, but 1629 was uh, to cut, to cut off, right? So he was using that symbolically, uh, d dealing with the mandates to be destroyed. <clears throat> but I think the significance there is is much broader and maybe in some ways even more specific because dealing with uh, the crucifixion of Christ in the midst of the week um, that this number relates to. So you can see we have a lot of information here. And, and part of what we're doing in these studies in the morning is I'm getting ready to present this and Stephen and Aran, we're going to be presenting Iran's going to be presenting, you know, how to use these different tools. He's going to be using examples of, you know, why we look at prime numbers, uh, their significance, um, all of the different symbolic uh, use of numbers, and the different tools that we have, the calendar converter, uh, the Bible indexer, um, and then these other things dealing with triangles and angles and shapes and all kinds of things that we've done. And we want to make these things uh, simple enough that people can understand the concepts. Um, yeah, and Adilio presented about 1629, Angela says, on February 12th, 2022, right? So that's where, that's one of those significant presentations, the mandate uh, presentation. But the thing is, we have to make these things so that people can understand what we're doing and that they can do it themselves. So one of the things that has always bothered me about what I'm doing um, is that not everybody understands it. And also I see it being misused. That is, people don't quite understand it and they will just take numbers that really aren't related and they will see in them some significant, especially if they're gonna predict some date in the future and they just say, well, you know, I counted this many days from here. I seek some kind of structure. And, and so this is going to happen on such and such a date. Or even if it doesn't happen, even sometimes analyzing things. Um, they're not really sure what we're doing. And sometimes when people have done this um, um, on WhatsApp, and some people have sent me things, you know, I would think that they're actually mocking me because I'd think, well, this makes no sense what they're doing. And, and sometimes they'll have like wrong math and, and or they'll just pick and choose. And I want people to understand that that's not what we're doing. That this is not some something that we're constructing from our imagination. You know, somebody can imagine, you know, what dinosaurs are, for instance. But we're not we're not imagining what dinosaurs are. What we're doing is we're digging up dinosaur bones, you know, just as an analogy. It's something real and concrete, you know. And and we're looking at those things, and we can see the structure of them. We're not just imagining like fanciful creatures, mythological creatures that might exist. Um, that these are things that are are based on reality. So. Um, and the symbols that are here, I, I think, are significant in that they connect to these stories that we're telling. That is the story of Jephthah, 
is relating particularly to our history. And, and the symbols that are there gives us these spans of time and they confirm that what we're doing is just not, not is not nonsense. So it's it's not nonsense. That means it's sense, right? It makes sense. So the likelihood that we would have taken this name of Jephthah and then, you know, doubled it, so to speak, to see this span of time, this 18 years. And then later, we're looking at the, the word shibboleth in the context of Capricar's constant. And, um, and then we just simply add those two names together and we get this span of time that is going to bring us to uh, that, that these two numbers with the 3316 and the 7641, we add them together and we get this 30 years to the day. This would be a strong indication that what we're doing is not nonsense. That is, it's sense, right? It makes sense. Right? It's not fanciful. So we didn't seek out to find these 30 years and find some numbers that fit. These were the primary symbols we were looking at in the context of this line. And, and when we looked at the 3316, it told us that we should start this line at 911 or, or 119 with this 18 years as this period um, of darkness in this movement. And we can see that. We can, we can understand the significance of that. So this has got more complicated than I wanted it to get. That is when I was going to just finish up the story of Jephthah. And then we noticed um, this 10th day of the 10th month of the 10th year, which is Rosh Hashanah in 2010, right? And now we've got this whole structure telling us something. And we looked at the shibboleth. And the shibboleth, um, the meaning of the word, I mean, originally is just um, uh, referring to uh, because they're going to be using this, they're going to be using this as a test. Right? So this is going to be a test. And so they're just going to say, say a stream, right? So this is shibboleth means a stream. And, but the Ephraimites, because this is in a conflict with the Ephraimites, the Ephraimites, they're not going to be able to say the SH sound. So they're going to say like the Samak sound. Sibylet, right? Not shibboleth. So they say sibylet, and sibylet um, means an ear of barley, right? Or an ear of grain. So, so they can't pronounce the word correctly. They can't frame it correctly. Okay. Now, what the word has come to mean in English is some. Um, convention that's now outdated. So how would shibboleth in this context of what we have here, how would this relate to this line? So we're saying that, you know, the, the modern meaning of the word shibboleth Obviously, it doesn't mean a stream, but they'll say something is a shibboleth. It's an outdated convention. Some people have applied it to, within Adventism, have applied it to um, uh, the teachings and the traditions of Adventism that are outdated, right? Things like the view of the daily or thing, you know, different practices that Adventists observe. Um, like there's a sermon, uh, uh, let me see, called Shibboleth, Seventh-day Adventist Church. I'm just looking at different shibboleths, really dealing with Adventists. So some people think our, our observance of the Sabbath is a shibboleth. 
right? So, so if we're applying shibboleth here to our movement, this is a word that can't be pronounced correctly, can't be framed correctly by the Ephraimites, but the Gileadites, the ones who are giving this message, uh, it, it becomes a test that they present. So what is it? Does it relate to the symbolic use of numbers? Is that what the December 6, 2020 de declaration was really saying? That, um, that what we did with numbers is a shibboleth? Or does it relate in some other way? Maybe there's some other way to understand this. But we see it relates to these spans of time. Right? Because it's Judges 12, verse 6. It's this number that's connected to Capricar's constants and iteration of it. It's connected to the 777 and the 666. connects us to the symbolic date of 10, 10, 10. And even if we take the name Capricar and we do the gematria and we multiply the letters of his name, we get a number that is uh, 3,136,320. And that number is 11 times 11. So 11 times 11 is 121. And there's 25,920 parts in a Hebrew day. So, so that gives us 121 days. We can already see we have the 11, 11, 11. So that's uh, the cubed root of of that so is the prime prime number one three three one or the the that is this number of days ten thousand nine hundred and fifty seven that is the prime the thirteen hundred and thirty first prime number and that number can be produced by multiplying eleven by eleven by eleven right <clears throat> so we have all of these 10, 10, 10, 11, 11, 11, 7, 7, 7, um, these 9, 11s and 11, 9s. What is the shibboleth? Let's just try to answer that question. What is this, what is this test that the Ephraimites are unable to pass? Pass. Any thoughts on that? And the Gileadites took the passages of Jordan before the Ephraimites. And it was so that when the, those Ephraimites, which were escaped, said, let me go over, that the men of Gilead said unto him, art thou an Ephraimite? If he said, nay, then said they unto him, say now, shibboleth. So, I mean, there's this. So this is the Jordan River. And they want to pass over the Jordan River. Because um, they've escaped. Where are they going? These Ephraimites. Which way are they going, east or west, when they want to cross over the Jordan? Would it be west? Yeah, they're going to go west because they're in the land of Gilead. They want to go home, right? But they've escaped. And so they want to cross over, but the, the Gileadites took the passages of Jordan before the Ephraimites. 
So yeah, so they want to go west. And uh, so they say, let me go over. The man of Gilead says, are thou an Ephraimite? And he says, no. And then they just say, well, can you now, can you say a stream, right? Shibboleth. And they can't say it. So the Jordan River represents what in our lives? What does the Jordan River represent? Well, in all the songs, the hymns and so forth, it normally represents you pass over the Jordan, you're, you're entering heaven. Okay, right. Now, we also know baptism occurs there, too, and that is a way of entering into God's kingdom through baptism, right? And here they're going into the promised land, right? So they would be coming in the way that the Israelites came in when they came, when they crossed over Jordan into the promised land. So in the context of this movement, this would be a symbolic date like September 11th, but also, you know, even November 9th. So in order for us to understand this message, this shibboleth, for those who can't frame it correctly, what does that mean? They can't frame it correctly. So they say sibilant. What What is it that they have done? Or that they can't do? They can't pass over to joy. Okay. So they can't, and, and they can't understand something. They can't frame it properly. Lines on the lines. Right. So the, the chronology, the dates, I mean, that's how I'm taking it. I don't know if that's necessarily the best way, but I can't see what else it could be. <clears throat> now, I tried to looking at this word, uh, Sibylet, 5451 just as a span of time. And, I mean, it's nearly 15 years. It's, uh, it's about 28 days short of 15 years. I don't know what that means. If I could place it somewhere, I haven't been able to. Um, You know, I might not have looked in the right place. Okay, so Angela's saying uh, uh, the letter Samach meaning support, we're referring to God's support of the fallen one, according to what I've read. It's being a circle, symbolizing eternity and the 15th Hebrew letter. So they, they only pronounce it as a Samic. Now, the, now the thing about uh, the Shin, which is the last letter of the Hebrew alphabet, um, that, that, the, that the word Shibboleth begins with, it also could have the S sound. It's just... They write it here as sibilant to indicate that they're not pronouncing it correctly. Um, but in their mind, they would be saying shibboleth. It's just like when somebody says Theodore, 
because they can't pronounce th. Um, so it would be, I mean, they could have spelt it the same in, in the Hebrew, but anyway, that's what we have. Um, so we have this letter Samic, whether that's important or not in this context. So I don't know. I don't have an answer to everything here. There's lots we don't understand. Um, so other things that we need to look at that were discussed outside of this study um, relates to uh, this span of time here. So from 11.9.89 to September 11th, um, we're taking this shibboleth number here, and we're, we're dividing it, but we have this number 4324. So if I count from the beginning of November 9th, 1989 to the beginning of September 11th, 2001, so that's just a cardinal count between those days, I have this number 4324. Now, when we looked it up, um, it was uh, the name... Uh, Michael, that is not Michael the Archangel, but it's the wife of David. And she has five sons. They're not her own. And in that story of uh, dealing with Michael, it's in, um, let me find it here quickly. Um, So the name Michael, there's disagreement regarding the name because um, it can refer to uh, a streamlet or a brook, um, which is what Strong's says. But it's also understood as a diminutive of Michael in the name of Christ. So Micah L. Um, but it's just a diminutive. That's a shortened form of it. So it, it leaves out uh, the Aleph. So it's Mem, Yod, Kaf, Lamed, instead of Mem, Yod, Kaf, Al, Aleph, Lamed. Right, so it leaves out one of the consonants. Now, the thing about Mike, Michael that's interesting, the, the wife of David, is she isn't going to have any children. She's going to have a curse put upon her because when David danced before the Lord, um, She's going to be um, offended, and uh, I'm trying to find the verse here. So it's going to be mentioned. I don't know if anybody knows the verse where it talks about she has five sons. Oh. In 2 Samuel 6, 23, it says, uh, Michael, the daughter of Saul, had no child unto the day of her death. So she didn't have any children. Um, but in 2 Samuel 21, 8, it says... Um, but the king took the two sons of Rizpah, the daughter of Aya, whom she bare unto Saul, Amor, Armoni, and Mephibosheth, and the five sons of Michael, the daughter of Saul, whom she brought up for Adriel, the son of Barzillai, the Mehoth, Mehothlite. Right? So she's going to have these uh, 
Michael is going to have these these five sons that she raises, right? Now, the five sons can represent, because five can represent the five wise and the five foolish. Uh, the fact that Michael is not going to have any children and that she adopts these children. Um, so we're looking at that period of time from November 9th, 1989 to September 11th. Is there any significance in this application of this number to Michael, what she might symbolize. Or we would just we would just cast away those that number four, three, two, four as as not being significant in relationship to the name Michael. Because if it is a rivulet that is or, or a small stream, a streamlet or a brook, I mean, that would represent the people. And if it's representing the people who are like God, because that's what the name Michael means, can also mean that, has these two different meanings. Could it refer to the people who are now being separated out to be the 144,000? All right, now they have to, they have to pass the 9-11 test, right? They have to frame it correctly in order to enter into the promised land with baptism. But we're seeing that this is a period of time from 9-11 to 11-9, this 18 years, right? And then it's going to be followed by, you know, 777 days, going to December 25th, 2021, right? So there's lots of little things on this chart. But is that make sense as, as a symbol? Or would somebody have some other suggestion? Or should we just set it aside? Anybody have a suggestion what we should do with that? <clears throat> I mean, is there too much detail here? Are there too many things that we're looking at to try to address these spans of time? Uh, I don't think there's a thing in God's word that can be set aside and 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 forgotten that the problem is there's so much in god's word that we're just trying to decrypt right now and it's yeah. just a flood of light you know it's just amazing okay okay so um yeah so was tess saying that michael so this is in the chat and, yeah and, and i understand what you're saying there i mean there may be significance the question is is the significant significance that we can take the number of the name of Michael just because we have a span of time. I mean, there's lots of times we have numbers and we don't have any, any reason to look at the Hebrew word just because we have a number. I mean, because, I mean, we, have, we would have a number for every Hebrew word. The, we would have to look at the context, right? So the context here, and, and which Iran has noted, Iran, um, you know, was Tess saying Michael stands up at 11, 9, 19? Well, she wasn't saying that's the close of probation for the world, but they were applying that this is the close of probation, right, for this movement. And, and they were saying that him that he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. So the idea was that you know, this movement was perfect, it doesn't sin, that we, we've got this new message of righteousness by faith from Parminder, which tells us we're righteous, right? We, we can actually believe we're righteous because of what Parminder has told us about the nature of man. 
And, and so when we get to November 9th, 2019, we're going to be these perfect people. And we'll have this perfect church. Right? That's what Tess is saying. So, and we know 11.9 and 9.11 come together, right? That is, they're the same way, Mark. And so if we can look at this 11.9, and see Michael, which is a diminutive of Michael, the archangel's name, Christ, and we can see that that we have the baptism and this close of probation tied together. Now we know that, of course, Christ is 12 years old at 9-11 and he's 30 at 11-9. He's at the temple with the priests, Passover. Right, so he's 12 and then 18 years later he's going to be baptized. But we can see how those symbols come together here. And, and maybe that's what's being said by this that this whole test of this movement is a test that's going to develop the character of Christ for those who can stand at the close of probation, which isn't November 9th, right? It is a type of a close of probation. But it's the close of probation for the false priests, not for the true priests, right? People close their probation. That is, they reject light. But those who are following God have not had their probation closed. They continue to receive light. Now their probation will close when Michael stands up after the Sunday law, after the loud cry. But within this line, within this line, the story of judges that's telling us about our history, it's telling us something about our history in these lines that are giving light for our feet at the present time. Right. We would have to accept that. So when we look at these 30 years, we get to November 9th, we can see that this, in this line, this is this period of time prior to The time of the end, right? The time of the end is going to be 11 9. We have the 18 years of darkness, but it even goes further back to these 30 years. And then we have an increase of knowledge. And this is going to be marked by the end of the Levitical chiasm. Jeff is going to introduce a, an understanding that explains the structure that this movement had passed through. Dealing with time setting. And, and he's going to present that on March 31st, 2020. So he's going to present this about the, Levit about the Levitical chiasm. And then we're going to have this date, June 22nd, 2020. That's where we're going to take this message and give it to the world, right? It's published on June 21st, but on June 22nd, it the message goes to the world. And that's 226 days after November 9th, 2019. And 226 is a mirror of 622, June 22nd. Or you could just take it. It's the 22nd day of the sixth month. Right. And we use Judges 1111 to mark those two dates, March 31st and June 22nd. And then we say the message is formalized with that October 30th, 2020 committee. 10 times 30 is 300, relates to the 300 years that are mentioned in those verses. We have the tragic vow, right? And then we have this December 6th, 2020 declaration. So it's just explaining all those things we explained. Now, another number that we need to look at that Iran had presented was this prime. So the 1331st prime is this span of 30 years. And 
the Hebrew number for this, uh, obviously 1331, the Hebrew number has a meaning and it's used in uh, this context. It's going to be in a Judges 11, verse 37 to 38. It's going to be used in those two verses. So let's take a look at them. So this relates to this 30 years of, of the 10,597 days. That is, is a prime number, or 10,557 days. 10,000. What's the number? 10,957, right? Sounds right. Okay. <laughs> yeah, 10,957 days. It's a prime number. It's the, th the 1,331st prime number. So we just look at that prime number. It's in this story, right? So we're not going to some other story like we were with Michael, the, the wife of 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 David, the daughter of Saul. We're going to this story itself. And this is about this, this woman that bewails her virginity. So just like Michael, the daughter of Saul, the wife of David, who's not going to have children, in this case, she's barren. It's not so much about being a virgin, but not being able to have children herself. She's gonna have raise five other sons that aren't hers. Um, but here in this story, Jephthah's daughter has this uh, experience where you she. Know, yeah. <clears throat> where did you find that at? About the um, Micah and her not being, her being burned? What verse was that? Yeah. Where did uh, you find it? Yeah, it was in um, 2 Samuel 20, 21. 21, yeah. But it don't say it don't say in there where she or oh, does it imply that she oh, adopted the boy? Yeah, huh? it says yeah, Michael the daughter of Saul, who she brought up. So it mentions these five sons of Michael, the daughter of Saul, whom she brought up for Adriel, the son of Barzillai, the Maholathite. Right? So they're not her own sons. Okay. Because it tells us in 623 that she had no child unto the day of her death. Second Samuel 623. So if you look at Second Samuel 623 and Second Samuel 21, verse 8. That okay. <clears throat> so she never had her own children, but she did raise five sons, which are going to be killed, right, in this story. Um, but anyway, getting back to this number, the, um, oops, I need to go. So the one, three, three, one, this is, uh, a word that refers to virginity, right? Or the tokens of virginity. So if you look it up, the first place it's mentioned is um, Leviticus 21.13, and he shall take a wife of her virginity, it says. In Deuteronomy 22.15, um, the tokens of the damsel, they have to take and bring forth the tokens of the damsel's virginity unto the elders of the city at the gate, right? Mentions the same thing in 17 and 20. So Deuteronomy 22.15, 17, and 20. And then... Um, and then in Judges uh, 11, verse 37 and 38. It's also um, talked about in Ezekiel 23, 2 and 23, 8. Um, but here in this passage, in Judges 11, 37, she's going to bewail her virginity, virginity upon the mountains, upon the mountains, right? Um, so... This is in this verse and this verse. All right, so both verses, the whale my virginity and the whale her virginity. 
<clears throat> okay, so we can then take this and connect it to the story of Michael, I believe, right? Because you have the five and you have the virgins, right? The five virgins that are five are wise, five were foolish. And this is connected to the rash vow. Now, how do we understand the rash vow? How did we place that upon the line or the tragic vow? We're going to place it from October 30th, 2020 to December 6th, 2020. It's a period of 37 days. That's where we placed it. We just... We put that story, we placed it between the October 30th, 2020 committee and December 6, 2020. We didn't give it its own way mark. It's just this period of time between the formalization of the message and the empowerment. And this is all about a rejection of a message. Right? This line is about a message that is, is rejected. Now, these two way marks, midnight and the midnight cry, that's what the formalization and empowerment of the second angel represent. Um, so we're, we're victorious, that is the message of Jephthah, is victorious over the enemy. And between the period where, because um, the Judges uh, 11, 12 to 27 is dealing with um, this negotiation that goes on, this correction of history because of misrepresentation of history. And then in that period of time, there's this, this victory of the message of Jephthah. But there's a tragic vow associated. And that's going to culminate in this, this story of Jephthah's daughter that we're putting in that history. It's five weeks, two days, that 37 days. And then we get to Judges 12, verse 1 to 6. And in verse 6, we see, clearly see the his, history of the Shibboleth. That's December 6, 2020. So the tragic vow relates to what? Okay. So Angela put something in the chat, which... Okay. Second um, Peter 3, verse 16... talking about Paul, that some of the things are hard to understand and the stable and unlearned uh, rest them or twist them, um, as they also do the other scriptures, unto their own destruction. And so, so obviously there are people who are skeptical and scornful about our studies who, without examining them consistently, which is true. Um, so applying Michael to the SDA church, which initially was like God in bringing um, God in being his favorite people, but like God in being his, or, but then mocked at David, the beloved with new light. Um, it's possible though. I still would place this in the context of this movement. I don't think we can take this story as we're making this application and bring the church into it, even though it's this period of time from 1989 to 9-11 that we're getting this symbol of Michael. Um, 
I just think it refers to this message in general. Uh, this message is going to be rejected and mocked, even by those within the movement. So when we get to that tragic vow, we're going to see at the end of this, um, you know, starting with November 9th, 1989, that we have a message that's given, but in the end, it's going to be rejected by the movement. Right, and she says more here about other things. But um, out of her, however, had come the five, the wise virgins made servants who follow the light from God. Yeah. So I don't know if, anyway, I don't think I would apply to the SDA church. In this context, this is about this movement. So this movement is, has rejected light. I think the thing that, that bothers me the most about what we're finding is, and, and based also on questions that people have been asking me, we have a movement that was raised up by God. And this movement pretty much has rejected the message that was given. I mean, we can't look at what's happening in the movement presently as following the light that was given this movement. You know, from my evaluation of what's being talked about in the Canadian and American groups, I don't see that this message, the light that was given to this message is being regarded at all. Uh, the indication is that the movement wants to just go back to some kind of conservative Adventism. Maybe that's a harsh uh, analysis. Maybe I'm not able to see things clearly. I don't know, what do people think? that this line continues to show that this movement has departed from God. I mean, obviously, December 6, 2020, we know that FFA, uh, the main organization of this movement, rejects the message that the movement had been given. Okay, so 2 Samuel 21, um, so how would that relate to what we're doing right now? Because we can go to these other lines for symbols. Um, but I, I don't think we can just jump around like that. I mean, we can take the symbol of Michael, um, but we're not taking this whole story, right? At least that's the way I look at it. We're just taking the name of Michael, the fact that she, who she is, that she had five sons, that she's going to be barren, so she takes five adopted sons. She is representative of Michael, the archangel, Christ. But we're not taking the story, the narrative, and applying it to our lines here. I don't see how it would fit. So, so Angela's just saying that um, in that there is uh, three consecutive uh, famine years. Now, that's going to be where exactly, Angela? Uh, that's Second Samuel five twenty one one. Okay, so and right. I'm wondering what those three years mean mean in our movement, three consecutive. Well, years when we get movement. there, then we can apply it. But I, I, all I'm saying right now is we can't go to this story and try to apply that 
to what we're looking at right now. Okay. Because when we get to Second Samuel, because we will get there, um, we're going to be dealing with a line, the lines of uh, Saul, David, and Solomon, right? When we get to these stories um, later on, and then we can see where they apply. But um, you know, definitely there are three years that then there was in famine. That was a famine in the days of David, three years, year after year, right? So this is going to be the context in which that story happens, but that's not the story that we're addressing right now. Like sometimes the stories can give light on symbols. And, but I would just say that, you know, once we start jumping into the other stories, we have to, we have to look at why we're there. We're there because of Michael, the name Michael, and the 4,324 days from November 9th, 1989 to 9-11, right? And, and since we looked at these numbers of Jephthah's name and the number for Shibboleth, we had within that span this number, and so... I think that we can safely say that we we don't just set it aside, but we can't we can't make it more than it is. It's a symbol of Michael, but it's also a symbol of a remnant, a small stream, a brook, right? A people. Now we could say that those people come out of the SDA church, you know, 1989. But the Michael there is not representing, we're not going to take the fact that Michael mocked David and apply it to this line because that's not the symbol we're using. It's representing Christ. It's representing the 144,000, those that develop the care character of Christ. They come out of the SDA church, so to speak. We're not leaving the SDA church, but it's the remnant of, of God's people at the end of the world, right? That's what this line is representing from 1989 to the Sunday law. Right. This is our history. So I think we can apply that there, but I don't think we can go beyond that. We can't take the rest of that story and try to place it here in the story of Jephthah without creating another line that is in the line of David. Does that make sense? Is maybe I'm being restrictive here. But that's how I understand when we look at a line, right? When we, we take a symbol, we can find a symbol someplace else. Does that make sense to people? So one of the things we see is we see uh, these symbols that we can place on this line in the story of Jephthah. They're going to give us a chronological structure. They're going to give us symbols that allow us to interpret this line so that we're not just shooting in the dark here. We can see that this relates to our history. It tells us something about December 6, 2020. We, we also moved here the six years. So another thing we just need to point out in this line. Uh, remember, we had the six years here from June 22nd, 2014, to December 6, 2020. But now we're taking the six years as from November 9th, 2019, to June 22nd, uh, 2023, right? So we're, we're, we're placing judges. That's the third angel arriving. Now we're saying that the third angel arrived June 22nd, 2023. So 
what is it that we're we're speaking about here? So six times two twenty. This is thirteen twenty. So what's the thirteen twenty about? Anybody remember what we were doing there? Just uh, relating to June 22, right? Yeah, June 22, 2023. That 43, 42 you got on the line, that matches marker on the Hebrew number. Okay. So when we count from November, okay, what were you saying? M William, what were you saying? That line you had it uh, um, at the beginning with, um, you had the 43, 20, 42 on it, I think you had on there. That's marker, ain't it? Michael, yeah. 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 That's so a just, Hebrew number, right? Yeah. It's a Hebrew number, Michael. So I'm just going to put an H there just to show that that's. So the number of days, exclusive count from November 9th, 2019 to June 22nd. Um, 2022, or is it 2023, pardon me, right? So June 22nd, 2023, right? This number of days, um, is one, three, two days. And that's an exclusive count. That's counting from the end of November 9th to the beginning of June 22nd. Right, so I put an X there for exclusive. I usually put italics like that. So that's an exclusive count. So if you counted it inclusively, it'd be 1321, but six times 220 is 1320. So, so what we're saying here is that on June 22nd, the third angel arrived to this movement. That's what we're, we're saying with this line. And in June 22nd was when we addressed this shibboleth. Okay. Now, after the study on June 22nd, um, I noticed this addition of... Uh, 3316 and 7641, that it ended up being this 30 years. So we didn't get that in the study on Thursday. We, we had addressed part of it, but we never put that together. <clears throat> so that means a message has arrived to this movement on this date. We're marking it. That is, Judges 12, verse 7 is being marked. And Judges 12, verse 7, sorry that we're going to go over a little bit here, but. Uh, and Jephthah judged Israel six years, then died Jephthah the Gileadite and was buried in one of the cities of Gilead. So we're saying that this message of Jephthah has completed its six years. So a new message has arrived to this movement. Whatever that means. But if we're going to believe these lines, what they're telling us 
um, I think we have to accept that that's the case. That now this message of Jephthah is particular to on this line December six, twenty twenty. Right. That is, it's a zoom in to December 6, 2020. Now, this is about a rejection of this message. Right. I believe that this message was rejected officially on June 22nd, 2023. If that makes sense. I think we'll have to wait and see if, how that bears out. This is about a rejection of this message. Okay. So it may seem rather... I mean, this is this is a difficult study. It's difficult because there's a lot of information. Now we also had, um, which is some good news, is that uh, Ron got out of the hospital on June 22nd. So he was there for 18 days. <clears throat> um, so that's good. So I think he's going to be doing better. And we know that this June 22nd is three years from June 22nd, 2020. And remember, we have all these June 22nds, 2011, 2014, 2017, 2020. Now 2023, we have five of those June 22nds that are marked in our lines. Did <clears throat> anybody? Um, Follow the studies on Sabbath uh, from, uh, is it the Canadian group? Anybody see any of those studies? Yeah, I've seen them, some of them. Okay, so who who was the lady? I don't know who the lady was. I, uh, she was doing Sabbath school, um, but... Um, they did it. It was like a. They, they was at a church and they was um. They was like um zooming from that church and half the time you couldn't hear them sing or nothing like that. So. Okay, so this is this woman elder from. Um, trying so her name's. Uh, I don't know who it was. Tonya, Jackson. Yeah, Tonya Jackson was the one. Yeah, they did Sabbath school. So she was a black lady. Yeah, she was. So yeah. So she's, she's an elder. Elder, elder told Tonya Jackson. So why why would she? Uh, never mind. I ain't gonna ask that question. Yeah, but that's so. That's all I'm trying to say is that. Um, okay. That you know, to me, for this movement to be zooming in onto a presentation from some other church um, I find rather disturbing. I mean, not that Jeff is our, you know, guide, but what do you think Jeff would have said um, about something like that? Well, first of all, if she's an elder, I would think he would, uh, he would be against that. Right, right. So this is this is what I'm saying when it comes to I didn't uh, know she was a elder. Yeah. Well, anyway. 
so to me, this is, um, that's what I understand. I could be corrected that uh, who she is, but this is what I believe who she is. Um, this was taken from some church. Uh, um, and there is a black elder, Tonya Jackson. So I don't know. Do you know which church it was? I, I can't remember what the name of it was. They said it, but I can't remember what it was. Yeah. Was it the Gethsemane Church? Uh, like I said, Theodore, I can't remember. Whether it was that one? It was one they, re they frequently go to, so I don't know who it was. Okay. Which one it was. Okay. Yeah, so this is, you know, this is to me is a problem. I mean, it doesn't matter really what church it was. It's not our movement. And um, so it, it's something that we should be concerned about. Okay. At least pray about it anyway. Yeah. Simple thing that I'm trying to say, and I know I've gone over time a bit, but I really believe that this movement has rejected this message. You know, in the vast majority of people in this movement really don't have an interest in this message. They have no interest in what we're studying. They have no interest in examining the foundation or understanding the lines. They're finding light in things that are darkness. So... It's not, not something that's pleasant to think about. I am going to say this about Norman. He did he did say something about he didn't have nothing to do with uh, New Age or something like that. I think he's what he was saying. Maimon Mame Wilson? Maimon Wilson, yeah. Yeah, but he does. Uh, he might do, but I, I'm just saying what he said. He Some guy yeah. brought up something in the audience. Yeah. And he and he said that that's new age and we shouldn't be involved in. It, so right. but people can be involved in new age and not know it. That's right. So I understand. I know, I know he's trying to do the right thing. I don't think he's he's hundred percent off, but he's he's doing things that are not not Adventist. Anyway, but yeah, it, it it's a difficult thing to talk about to see what's happening to this movement. But anyway, we're going to close with prayer. The dear Father in heaven, we lift up one another in prayer. You know, Lord, that uh, the temptations are all around us, the discouragement that many feel because of what's happening in the movement can affect their ability to, to trust in you, that you are in charge. And Lord, we know that you are leading. We need you. And help us to depend upon you for righteousness, depend upon you for light. Help us to encourage one another, to lift them up. Um, we pray, Lord, that we can minister to those around us and to those in this movement. And we thank you for all the things you are doing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.